that's going to make somebody mad. Eh, I'll just leave it in there. Hello, everybody. Catchy underneath you with Catchy Gaming. And I finished Stellar Blade a couple of days ago. And I wanted to do a bit of a review. So I'm going to start with the story because that makes the most sense to me as a starting point. So what is Stellar Blade in terms of the story? You play as Eve, a member of the 7th Airborne Assault Squadron. And it starts off with her being deployed onto the Earth and everything just goes wrong right off the bat with their ships being destroyed, their drop pods being destroyed mid-air, with her being one of the few to survive. With her pod door being stuck, she's rescued by Tacky, another member of the 7th Airborne. The commanding officer for the 7th Airborne Squadron, or I should say the 7th Airborne Assault Squadron, which I didn't find out till you read her profile later in the game. She helps Eve out of her capsule, and you get the reveal of the character, which there's a very select group of people, otherwise known as game journals, who had a bit of an issue with this character's appearance. Personally, sure, she's attractive, but uh, to put it in perspective, I'm more of a Aerith kind of guy than a Tifa kind of guy, if that makes any sense. Although, yes, I'm referring to Final Fantasy Rebirth slash Remake to sort of get my point across. So the few squad members that did actually survive are being easily defeated by the Nitiba, the enemy that are on the ground. And it doesn't help one of their ships crashes into what's left of them, leaving only Taki and Eve. Now, the weird thing is, outside of Eve and Taki there, all of them look the same. I mean, there might be some slight variations in their hairstyle and stuff like that. But Eve and Taki are distinctly different from the rest of them. I'm just going to let the footage play. You can see. The squad's life signs. We're the only two left. Now, before I get too far in advance, I should say that their mission is to search and destroy all the Alpha Nativa, as well as capture or eliminate the Elder Nativa. Now, if you're thinking that the Nativa name sounds a little weird, they originally were natives, but people decided they had an issue with that. And personally, I think it actually kind of works in their favor, changing it to Nativa, because it makes a plot point very obvious when you know that little tidbit of information in terms of what the Nativa actually are. So after the dropship crashes on what's left of the squadron, you get to fight the elite Nativa, known as a Brute. And depending on what you do in the game, this might be the only time you encounter it. Not long after defeating said elite Nativa, they encounter their first Alpha as well. So Eve's body frame was damaged in her landing, and she's down and out. And the Alpha Nativa that shows up is designated Unidentified Nativa. And it definitely represents a huge threat with its big, huge black claws on its arm, its feathers, its mask. It's just threatening and intimidating. And it clearly goes for Eve, even though Taki tries to get its attention, and she ends up being injured. They want to give the appearance of being killed, but I don't know about anybody else. It seemed pretty obvious that she was going to make a return in some shape or form. And I might add, although this scene is a bit on the gory side, I'm going to leave it in because I think it's an intentional red herring. I'm not sure why they just didn't show this scene in the game. Because they jumped to a ship landing and Eve getting out. Obviously, she survived, and then they show this, like, not even five minutes later when you find your first encampment of Adam saving Eve. I'm not entirely sure why they went with a flashback. And technically, it's actually three different flashbacks. Two of them are more or less the same event. And I'm kind of... It, it's weird that they use still shots of the whole entire thing. Now, I don't like to read into things, but there could be some symbology related to 
the particular endings that you have the ability to choose from at the end of the game. Now, the city they landed in is Adon 7, although it is spelled exactly like IDOS, the video game development company, which then became part of Square Enix. That's just, that's neither here nor there. It's just a little weird that they're like Adon when it, as far as I can tell, it should be IDOS. I'm just going to call it IDOS because Adon just doesn't sound right. And as far as English is concerned, I don't know, maybe it's a British thing because they are using British accents. It should be IDOS. So I'm going to stick with IDOS. So I'm going to touch a little bit on gameplay. So as you traverse through the various levels, it usually does a bit of a pattern of linear gameplay, open world, back to linear, back to open world, back to linear. It kind of follows that pattern just a little bit. But as you do it, it has, I guess, sort of a sub story or hints about the story that help you sort of make a decision later on by finding records from various sources like corpses of the Legion that fought against the Natiba before they evacuated to the colony out in space. Or you can find news articles, stuff like that, that have various bits of information in them. Idos 7 here, for instance, was the last city they defended with the Legion troops, and they were annihilated by the Natiba. Now, it's a little weird because it's been decades since anyone's even been here to make any record of any kind, but their corpses are still here, and there's kind of a reason for that. This whole entire thing, they sort of kind of let you know it's a bit of a red herring, because there's one particular part of the game they want you to get to and that's when you find the hall of records and that's when you enter the hall of records and they talk about the body cell it allows them to withstand environmental sort of situations that would usually kill a normal human being and it probably explains why they haven't deteriorated yet or at least in part at least that was my initial thought until we got to zion the name that oddly uh, Shares the same name as that of the Matrix. Spelled differently, but pronounced the same apparently. And they even have an oracle here. But the oracle and like its denizens are just obvious giveaways that these aren't humans. Maybe I had a sort of inkling that... Yes, maybe they're just kind of a cyberpunk-ish situation where they're being modified by robotic parts. But with all the little tidbits of information that you gather throughout the game on various dead bodies as well as news clippings and stuff like that, and then they have these recordings, legacies according to the game, it's obvious that Mother Sphere is not what she is claiming to be or says she is i mean it they literally hit the nail on the head by even having articles about mother sphere going insane and that it's obvious that there's a war between humans and mother sphere which it was idos andros or something like that it was some kind of robotics company they even have a quest looking for organic humans. I mean, they're sealed by Mother Sphere, and it makes it very obvious that the Natiba are actually the original humans. And that the Airborne and all the other denizens of Zion are actually androids, or I think they're actually more cyborgs than actual androids. I mean, they have actual flesh. Like I said, the scene where you see Taki lose an arm is a bit of a red herring in that. Because you see various other scenes where they have mechanical parts protruding from their body at times. I mean, it's made even more obvious when they have Inya here, who's nothing but a robot. And you investigate her past, finding out that she's just a really advanced robot that's sung in an opera house. 
Or maybe she's not really advanced, because look at everybody else in comparison to her. She's actually an older model that still managed to stick around. And then later on, when you get to Orbital Elevator, you meet a different one. I mean, Lily treated her as if she's human, but she's clearly just an automated maid. And the whole entire final war that they talk about, it was actually started by Mother Sphere. And out of desperation to stay alive and fight back against Mother Sphere, the humans started mutating themselves into the Natiba in order to be able to fight back. And they started to win. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious, even before you get the end of the game, that the Natiba were the original humans. I mean, it's confirmed when you get towards the end of the game and the unidentified... Uh, Natiba attacks Zion, and the Oracle gets beat up along with his bodyguards, who never stood a chance. But he admits at one point he was a android, and he was combined with a Natiba, and he was an Alpha Natiba. I mean, again, they pretty much telegraphed this throughout the game because there's different clues leading to this but it's super obvious like it wasn't subtle in any shape or form i mean they sort of start off somewhat subtle by giving you reason why people were sort of avoiding going to what they called the cradle and you're like what's wrong with the oracle and then it was just sort of easy to connect the dots from there that he's either a nativa or part nativa now the thing that doesn't make sense is why they need to make an elder core for getting into the nest, considering what happens later on. But because you couldn't get one of the said cores because it was lost in space. So let me just touch on that briefly. So you get to the top of the orbit elevator, you defeat a boss, and you're like, it has no core, and a big huge hand grabs you and tosses you out of the orbit elevator. I mean, this is what you see. This big, huge mass of things just hanging out in the middle of nowhere. And you do a fancy thing with your railgun drone thing. And you destroy it and you're not able to get the core. So the Oracle gives you his. So remember the scene at the very beginning of the game where they're just being absolutely devastated. This thing flies down from the colony, rescues Eve before she enters enough atmosphere to burn her to pieces. And not one shot was fired at this thing. I mean, they're hitting these tiny little pods in comparison. Not a single shot fired at it. Why didn't they use these to get everybody down instead of those damn pods they used? So after that whole entire thing involving the Oracle and you defeating the unidentified Natipo, who turned out had Raven, the commander of the 2nd Airborne, Assault Division inside of it. Anyway, she gets away during... Well, during the cutscene, not so much during the fight. And then you encounter her again as you approach the Natiba nest looking for Adam, who, again, it's pretty obvious is a Natiba himself. And the word usage by Raven indicates that it's Adam. I mean, they're, they're trying to be clever by just using he instead of Adam, but... It's clearly just Adam. But she's here to, you know, fight Eve, keep her from getting to Adam and all the other fun stuff. This is the second hardest fight I've had in the game, and I was just playing on normal. And now I'm just randomly putting that out there, even though I just want to talk about the story. We won't get into any mechanics in terms of that. So after you defeat Raven here and you disable her, keeping her from moving, she lets her know that she's did that so she has to watch what happens next and you don't get to see what happens to raven this is just it i mean there's multiple endings and she's in none of them so when you get into the natiba nest you see a whole bunch of cocoons everywhere kind of reminiscent of the facilities that you go into and you see basically what are almost humans everywhere in these tubes but this is a little bit more natural Especially in comparison to that of the facility that more or less produce earlier forms of the Natiba. 
So that's when you come across Adam. He's the only Natiba that we've seen that actually resembles that of humanity, but he has a whole Sephiroth thing going on with his one sort of wings coming off to one side. I mean, they... I don't know what they thought they were hiding. I mean, they have Eve and Adam, and I don't know how common Christianity is in Korea. I know it's there, but it's par for the course here. I mean, even if you don't believe, it is... At least when I was growing up, we talked about it. Not in like a religious sense, more of an educational sense. So I'm familiar with Adam and Eve in either sense. It, it's not like they were hiding anything. Or at least able to hide anything. And this is where more or less the three endings sort of come from. You have a choice of taking Adam's hand. Which is the part where I'm sort of like... Is that sort of reminiscent from the flashbacks where they just had a still of them shaking hands? I don't know. I might be reading too much into that, but because they, you know, insisted on using a still shot, I'm kind of thinking yes. So if you refuse to take Adam's hand, which we'll consider the first ending, you end up fighting Adam. And he turns into this multi-armed, multi-winged armored giant thing. And I mean, actually, it's the best looking to team in all the game i mean yes it is the final boss but so once you defeat him he does his whole entire speech and he just turns into a pile of bones personally i'd be super wary of him because there was at least one Natiba that had regenerative capabilities and kept coming back but that's just me i guess and when you go outside again, you don't see Raven. Just remember that <laughs> on any of the endings. And you meet this sort of holographic representation of Mother Sphere. And she lets you know that, yes, you get to go back to the colony. And this is where I kind of get a touch irritated with the game. Uh, so that's the colony. I mean, remember this thing hanging out in space? And then you have this whole entire thing out in space? How did you not know that thing was there out in space? And there's another little bit of that cutscene. Let me rewind it just a touch to one scene before he transformed into his big white armored uh, godhood or semi-godhood. Demigod? I don't know. What's, what, let's go with that. So on top of this weird sort of, I don't know, best way to put it is introduction of magic. I'm just going to let this cutscene play because I want you to. All we need is for you to disappear. Go away. Go. Lily. Lily, I am sorry. Ah! Lily, hide! Now, let's look at what happens if you take Adam's hand. Are you Eve? Yes. Well, it's hard to describe, but... Lily, 
I am the Eve you remember. I was worried that you would become someone I didn't know. Lily. Connection to the colony. Sending protocol. Sensing strong native signals near. So, the suit of armor Lily is wearing turns hostile, gets taken over by Mother Sphere. Now, this is kind of the point that annoyed the hell out of me. Although Eve gets into her weird, uh, bestial, semi-human, sort of, knit heba armor there. This fight doesn't make sense in light of the previous cutscene. Now, I didn't see that till after I played through on normal the first time and chose this ending. So I didn't see that. But this whole entire fight doesn't make any sense in light of it. It's just this weird inconsistency amongst the endings. I mean, you would think if the two of them are fusing together, I don't know, maybe too much anime or maybe one plus one equals two sort of logic in terms of that, uh, that the two different people would turn into something greater. Uh, no, no, she uh, it's just uh, regular Eve. I mean, I don't want to speculate or make things up in my head in terms of headcanon. That she was, I don't know, holding back so as not to hurt Lily. I don't know. I mean, yes, if you get far enough into the health bar of said suit of armor, you go into basically a permanent Taki mode. So this is technically a point in which I guess the two last innings sort of come apart. If you collected enough little tidbits of information, you went to IDOS 11 and you got a hacking program, which allows Lily to get out of the suit of armor. And you go into, like I said, that permanent talkie mode and you just get the flail on it. It doesn't actually feel that strong. Again, I don't know, this whole entire gap in ability in the cutscene versus what you can actually do in game really annoys the hell out of me. I mean, there's not much difference between the two other than one Lily dies, you know, after watching that cutscene where she was a whiny little brat in the armor. Yeah, she was trying to help Eve. I, I couldn't help it like the part where she got cut in half. But it pretty much plays out the same, except for maybe, I don't know, a minute or two of animation. Same thing, I mean, you do this fancy thing where you cut the suit up and it has a Power Ranger death. So in both endings, you get to leave and you see Mother Sphere and you get to see Lily's uh, inner robotic parts, kind of proving that I'm still not entirely sure if all of them are cyborgs. I mean, yes, they eat food in order to maintain their bodies, but they're still mechanical. I'm not sure how much of them are technically cyborgs or at what point they'd be considered as cyborgs. Is it just the air of salt? I don't know. They don't really answer these questions. Are they just robots like a Terminator with skin on their outside of their bodies? It doesn't really answer these questions in any shape or form. There's a lot of inconsistency and not answering questions that arise out of the story. Either way, with those two, Mother Spear says she's disappointed with the results of the combat. Although, yes, she's happy that the Elder Natiba is gone. Uh, she's not happy that Eve fused with said Elder Natiba and says the Eve protocol is over and brings in a whole bunch of, I don't know, more airborne assault troops to fight Eve. 
And I guess the one thing I did forget to mention is if you choose the ending, or I should say if you get the ending where Lily survives, you also get the last hypersphere, which they'll show in a cutscene after this of Lily taking it and putting it into the last slot in Zion, allowing you to reawaken all the people that are in the hibernation, allowing you to rebuild Zion and maybe humanity in some shape or form on the surface of the planet. But at this point, you're surrounded and you fight all of these airborne troops, like I mentioned earlier. It's kind of like the ending to Halo Reach, except for the part where you don't die. I mean, you, you do the fight and then it just sort of fades to black. And this game commits one of the most egregious sins of all time and not letting you skip the credits. I don't mean to be a dick, but I honestly just don't care enough. There's only been one time that I've watched credits, and that was for a little bit. And that was to see who played Mario's voice in Mario Wonder. But after you eventually sit through all those credits, you do get a scene where you get to see that all of them were slaughtered by Eve. So the story... I don't know if they thought they were being clever. It was super obvious about one third of the way through the game what everything was going to happen. The only thing that threw me off for a bit of a surprise was the unidentified Natiba was Raven. That was it. That was like the only thing that I didn't see coming. I mean, this story was super predictable. And then it has a bunch of inconsistencies like, Yes, with the cutscene with the power levels between Adam and the suit, and then fused Eve fighting the suit and just having a hard time with it. And then you have this whole entire thing of if Adam was the elder Natiba, why did he help Eve kill all the Alpha Natiba? Were they under his control? Was it sort of like a Phantom Menace thing? Or if you take them out as well as Adam, that they all just stop doing their thing? I mean, Raven it was definitely hinted at she had her own agency. She could do whatever she wanted. What about the other Alpha Nativa? I mean, there's questions they're not answering, and I don't want to fill it in, because that's just bad writing when I have to fill it in. And I could be incorrect in terms of what their motivations were for that if they had their own decision-making abilities at all. And what about the lesser ones under the Alpha Nativa? Do they just stop functioning? I mean, they kept going after you defeat the Elder... Sorry, Alpha Nativas. I, I mean, there's just questions they don't answer. What happened to Raven? Did Mother Sphere take her away? If Adam wanted to make amends, like he said... Why didn't he just do it himself? Why did he let Eve do all the work? It, it's never explained. Did he want her to get stronger before he merged with her? I mean, there's a lot of unanswered questions in this story. Particularly when it comes to the endings and kind of because of the endings. I don't know. I just I feel like this story's a bit of a mess. With that, um, if you made it this far... Thanks for watching. Have a good one.